everybody. Nice to see you here. Uh, my name is Corinne Wallenda. I'm one of Perlix Regional Sales Managers, and this is the fabulous Jason Chin. Um, I like to call Jason a engineer, but in reality, his title that's on his business card is Beverage Systems Engineer. Okay, now, so is it fair to assume that everyone has had a beer out of a keg? Yes. Yes? All right. How about wine out of a keg? Yes. Wine out of a keg? What about cocktails out of a keg. Yep. Okay, so Kimberly's had everything out of a keg. <laughs> so what we're going to be talking about today is cocktails on tap. Um, cocktails on tap is a little bit more of a challenge though. Think about it. It's not just one ingredient, beer or wine, in a keg. It's what? It's multiple ingredients. Each ingredient in the cocktail has a different level of viscosity. That means it's going to separate very quickly. And so what you need to do um, is keep things mixed in there. Now how have folks who've been doing cocktails on tap been keeping their uh, kegged cocktails mixed? They paid the strongest guy in the bar to come out and shake this thing. Uh, so what we've come up with is a recirculating pump that, it, that keeps everything um, adequately mixed so that the very first drink tastes just like the last drink. Um, we've tried some other options, things like a little spinning paddle in the bottom of the keg, etc., and those just didn't work. So really, it took us a couple of years to come up with an NSF approved recirculating pump that we felt could handle what a commercial environment could dish at it. So these are the basic components Corinne described to you, um, the pump, the inline filter, and the keg. Basically what happens is you uh, pull the liquid off the bottom of the keg, it goes through the pump, it gets dispersed back into the, the tank with uh, on an angle, so you create a vortex inside the tank, keep everything stirred up really well. You use a gas to push down the liquid to get it up to the faucet to pour out, and there's your cocktail. Two of the overriding principles in everything that Perlick does is durability and sanitation. Anything and everything that we produce that can be NSF certified, we get certified NSF. Did you guys know that this faucet that you're going to get on all of your new beer on tap, wine on tap, cocktails on tap, kombucha on tap, cold brew coffee on tap, etc. This is the only faucet that is NSF certified. As a matter of fact, in addition to NSF, we've even re received a design award with this. There is a uh, Chicago Architectural Foundation that has a museum called the Athenium, and they actually get, gave us a design award for this. It was the same year that Google created the Chromecast. They got the same award that we got from the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Kind of cool. So what makes this so sanitary? This is a forward sealing faucet. I mean, if you, and I'll pass this around for everybody to look at it, but what happens is the beer stops right here. It's completely sealed off from the air, and any beer that remains in the faucet, shoom, just flies right out of the faucet itself. This is a pretty typical rear sealing faucet. You see, this is what just about everybody else has. It looks exactly like this. So, if, and again, I'll pass this around. You'll see that the beer stops here. Unfortunately, when that happens, the beer that the, there is some beer that can remain inside the faucet itself. And what happens when that beer remains inside the faucet? Beer is a live product. It's got yeast in it. It's live. So what happens is that yeast will go through a second or even a third fermentation and will create basically a blob of goo that has to be pulled out of the faucet every morning. Um, it also becomes a nice place for fruit flies to have a party too because it's exposed to all this air. So using a forward sealing faucet is far cleaner than a rear sealing faucet. That's why we've got NSF on this. And it, as we like to say at Perlick, there's more profit poured in the bar than cooked in the kitchen. We love food, that's what brings everybody in, that's what brings in revenue, revenue. Now profit, is what comes out of the adult beverages that we consume while we're eating our food. It also, food also allows everybody to sit down, have a great time, and order more drinks. How many times have you been to a restaurant where we've all had like a great steak or something, and the server comes along and you say, you know, that was fantastic, another round of steaks for everybody. Doesn't happen, but you <laughs> will do that with your adult beverages. That's where the restaurant is making its profit. Um, I also like to tell folks that um, it's, it's absolutely critical that you've got a really well-designed bar program. Why? Because if you're not making at least 80% profit margin on what's, what you're serving in the bar, you're doing something very wrong. Now, 
in a bar, time is money. So being able to serve cocktails very quickly out of a tap, maybe just a featured cocktail, maybe it's just one or two that you're going to offer, makes a whole lot of sense because you're quickly serving something that would ordinarily take maybe a minute for a bartender to shake it up, strain it, pour it, put it over ice, etc. Out of a keg, maybe 10 seconds, a little ice, a little garnish, boom, there you go. It's all about the money, and that makes bartenders happy, and that makes bar owners happy, absolutely.